Welcome to Unforbidden Truth. I'm Andrew. This is part four of my interview with Todd Colhead. At any point in time, then or now, have you felt remorse for any of your victims? Yes. I've always felt remorse for Christy. Uh, the girl in Arizona. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, I've been deeply embarrassed about that most of my life. Wish it never happened. Uh, it was my fault. Uh, Regardless of what we, me and her, had ever tried to have, you know, we never dated. We kind of fooled around with the you know, when you're kids. Uh, everything I did was wrong, and I was very embarrassed about it. That one I've always had remorse over, which is why most of my adult life I've gone out of my way to try to help women, never make them feel uncomfortable. Um, I had a lot of renters, and I mean, I would, I would really go out of my way to make them not feel nervous or taken advantage of. Uh, as far as the two guys at the apartment complex, not one damn bit. Uh, they got what they got coming. They were, they were, their intent was to stab me or hit me with a hammer or whatever it is they had in their mind, but they made it clear coming at me that their intent was to cause me harm. And surprise, surprise, you know, not everybody on the sex offender website is a little pretty little child monster who's going to throw up a little ball and go, oh, no, don't hurt me. No, I'm not going to kill you. Um, they want to play. They put themselves on that field. And they got what they were trying to get. So I don't feel one damn thing about them. Uh, hope the worms had a good old time. Worms the fields. They had a nice meal for them. Um, I don't feel big man those. The bike shop, I wish I had walked away. Uh, it was just a bike. The bike was paid for, uh, insurance paid. I mean, I lost a thousand dollars and it wasn't even my thousand dollars. It was my, my grandfather's. Uh, I didn't lose anything. I should have just ranked up to uh, ego, attitude, bad moment, whatever. I could have been pissed, maybe thrown a brick through the window. Uh, I've just never been a whole... Um, if I'm going to do something to you, I'm going to do something to you. I'm not going to throw a brick through a window and, and, oh, no, I never did it. If I did it, I'm going to admit that I did. If you ask me if I did the crime, I'm not going to hide behind and go, oh, no, I'm not guilty. You need to, you know, prove this. No, it's probably I did it. Go ahead and punish me and then let's move on. Um... I'm not gonna lower myself to sit here and lie and play games and tell people I didn't do it when I did. I'm not gonna play it in court. Uh, it's not my style. Uh, I did it. I meant to do it, and it's over with. If you don't like it, too bad. It was my choice. But I wish I had walked away from that. I uh, did not like killing the woman at all. I did not even know Beverly guy was in the building. Uh, never knew she was there until she was in my face and instinct was bringing the gut up and I put a nine millimeter through her heart. Uh, the mechanic, Sherbert, uh, Sherbert deserved, deserved a lot of things, but not by me. I mean, he's got a criminal history, he's got some nonsense, uh, he's, been his, he's been his girlfriend, but that's not for me to decide. Uh, he would have gone to jail eventually. It would have happened. But it wasn't for me to decide. Uh, Brian was an asshole. Uh, Potter backed him up. But once again, it's just a freaking bike. Uh, looking back, I wish I had just gone. Then the, then, then the, the bigger guy and said, screw it. Uh, you know, screw you. Screw your company. I'll go buy my next bike from somewhere else. And all about my business instead. I just couldn't let those eight words out of my head. What are you going to do about it? Um, well, now you know what I'm going to do about it. But at the time, I, I just couldn't let it go. And I wish I had. So, yes, I mean, there's, there's some remorse on that one. Uh, there's definitely regret. Regret and remorse are not the same. But I definitely wish I had not done that one. Um, Sorry for that one. Uh, the guys, the war is, no, there's no regret, there's no remorse. 
Uh, you know, they've got no problems bringing drugs in this country. They've got no problems buying underage girls or people stealing and robbing and any other damn thing they want to do to get the money to buy the drugs. And they don't give a shit when it comes to people, uh, what they do, as long as the money comes to them so they can, they can have a room full of cash and go buy, you know, gold plated everything. And I mean, they're, you know, from teeth to guns. That meant that much to you that it's okay to uh, screw over that many people? I mean, true, these people bought the product, but once you're hooked, you got them. You don't care what happens to them. So, no, I mean, I, I have no remorse for that. Uh, I don't think I did anything effective. I don't think all the bodies that are out and got along the, along the border amounted to anything. I think as soon as uh, they got dropped, I think somebody else replaced them. So I don't think we changed anything. I don't think the cartel missed the drugs. There wasn't enough there overall in the big picture to uh, they didn't give my bloody nose. They didn't feel it. Um, if they, they thought one of, their, one of their competitors probably did it. They missed the cost of business. So it was a waste of effort. Uh, some other work I've done. These are criminals. It does some evil stuff. If I'm at your front door, it's because you did something. I'm not going to kill you because, you know, you're a prostitute or you're wearing a red sweater. It reminds me of a red sweater my dad used to wear or some nonsense. Um, I don't do random. There is no random in my world. Never has been. So I'm very selective. If you're not doing major problems and you're not basically a threat to me uh, in some regard, I'm not going to touch you. If it's just an argument, I'm going to walk away from it. I'd rather buy you a beer at the bar. If I spill your beer, I'll buy you another one. Hell, I'll buy your friend a beer. Come on over to my table, hang out. Let's couple beers. Now I got two new friends. I'm not going to start a fight. I've never been in a bar fight. But if you're not going to go with that, well, that's on you. Um, I had stopped all killing for many years. I was trying to be a boyfriend of Ashley. I wasn't a very good one, but I was trying. Uh, I was definitely trying to be a daddy to her daughter. Um, kids used to scare the hell out of me. Uh, never really wanted one of my own because I was so scared that they would be have the same childhood that I had. So I did everything the exact opposite my parents did. Never touched her, never talked down to her, never spanked her, never hit her, never, never did any of that. Um, I mean, I'll ground you. You'll lose, you'll lose the TV forever. Don't even think about a cell phone. But that's it. You're going to get grounded. You're going to lose, you're going to lose privileges of where you can go and what you can do. That's it. Um, when I was trying to be a daddy, I took it serious. I was trying, it took a while for me to get into it because I was more scared of the kid than the kid wasn't me. I had no idea how to be around a kid. Um, hadn't been around any. Scared of going to break you. Scared of going to say something wrong. I'm going to give you. A, I'm going to say something. Yeah, I'm going to regret. Um, I'm going to go down the same path my parents did. So, kind of a little terrified of being a daddy, but I was trying. Um, one of the things I did is I stopped killing. I stopped going to war. Is I stopped doing all of that. I still worked with the arms dealer once in a while. Mostly doing, mostly fixing guns, uh, guns that came in broken, guns that didn't quite work right, uh, modifications. But I quit a lot of that stuff and was trying to just be a real estate agent, um, playing, on my, playing on my land. The land was a big play toy to me. And then Johnny showed up and Johnny pulled a knife. And I don't have one bit, zero. Remorse, regret, nothing for Johnny. I dropped him. He pulled a knife, I pulled a gun. He lost. Uh, I'm sorry that I ended up killing Megan. I don't like killing women. It's not easy. It's definitely not fun. Um, I try to make it as painless as possible, and I try my best to make sure she never saw it coming. She looked at me, smiled, looked the other way, and she went to, went to walk away. The gun came up, and she never knew, never knew it happened. 
the lights just went out like a switch. If I could have found any other way of doing that other than killing her, I would have done it. If it cost me money, whether it was 4000 40000 money is replaceable. Money is not hard to get. It's just effort going out there and making it happen. Um, she's a pretty girl. I'm, I really wished I could have found a better way, but that day, uh, I just didn't find one. I couldn't find another way when she's trying to set fire to the building and all the stuff that went off. She thought it was so funny to almost do that. And I had told her, you know, the ammunition, all the stuff that was in there. What in the hell's wrong with you? And she started laughing. I thought it was funny. I, I, security went out the door. At this point, it's not safe to hold you anymore. I don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. So I removed the problem. Um, as far as Charlie, Charlie, I actually have remorse for. Charlie was not a bad guy. Um, early dirty guy, basically kind of geek, comes to the dragons, works at a print shop. Um, he wasn't a bad guy. He had watched Taylor for years and years. He knew her, and she knew that she hated anybody and everybody, and he always wanted his chance. And he finally, finally got his chance to have her. He had a wife, and he talked to her into, into a threesome. He talked to Taylor into having a threesome, and then it was her, Taylor was their pet. Um, the agreement on that was that, according to Taylor, that uh, he would not be with them unless both of them were there. There would be no one-sided uh, playtime. Kayla intentionally got busted by Nikki, having sex to Charlie, which made Nikki upset, and Nikki moved out, which is what Kayla wanted, because then Kayla got Charlie all to herself. Uh, this went on for a while, and then she got tired of Charlie. Now, that was old, and she wanted new, and this is where she came forward with her leaving him and wanted me to put her up in a rental. Getting back to the, 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 the topic, Charlie wasn't a bad guy. Charlie was just willing to do whatever it took. He finally had an attractive woman. Um, Nikki, Nikki looks like a wildy beast. That, that is one utterly stupid woman. Unbelievably stupid. He, turned, he finally got the woman that he thought he wanted. She's not the one he thought she was. And was willing to go ahead and steal from me to keep her happy. And he got killed for it. And I wish I had not killed him. I wish I had just come out of the room, come out of the building, and fired him. And said, I'm done with you, both of you, off my land. You're fired. And be done with you. And I wish that is what I, I had done. Uh, I wish I had not killed Charlie. But unfortunately, I jumped the gun and I did. Do you have remorse for the imprisonment of Kayla for those 65 days? I don't. I don't have a phrase. Um, I'll do my best. I mean, I, would, I really wish I had. I had a little more common sense. I had followed. Everybody told me to leave her alone. And I wish I had stopped thinking that I knew more than everybody else. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a real estate broker. I'm the wealthy guy. I do what I want. I know more than you do crap. And I wish I had just never messed with her. Uh, you know, if you're a prostitute, you're a junkie. And it's my fault that I brought you into my world. Uh, I can't blame her. I, I blame me. I should have had a little more common sense and left that alone. I mean, I had a girlfriend that was very loving. I had a mistress that was very giving. I, I had everything I wanted in life. Why did I always have to have just one more? Just one more time, one more day, one more person, one more woman. It got to be overkill, and obviously it bit me in the ass. Um, I wish I hadn't ever messed with her. That was my fault. I wish I had gone ahead and fired 
want to brought them out, but if I had brought them out and, and when they said that, I should have just gone ahead and fired them and sent them home. Truly wasn't harmed. Truly wasn't going to hurt me. The only thing Truly would have done is complain about driving all the way out here and then having to go home. But quite honestly, I'm not sure he can do that. I just caught him talking about stealing. He knew he, he, knew he was wrong. His parents raised him better than that. Um, he knew he was wrong. I don't think he would have even said that. I think he would have got back in his car and left. I just jumped the gun. I was pissed off about, you know, here we go again. I was pissed off about the whole Johnny thing. I really wasn't uh, quite over that. And I wasn't going to procrastinate and hesitate. I just walked in and, and did what I did. Um, within a matter of seconds, it was over with, and my mind was focused on cleaning the scene and, and, and moving forward. Uh, there really wasn't any real emotions about it. I wish that had gone a different route. As far as holding her, what's the alternative? I either put you on the ground or I hold you. That's the only two choices. Letting you go is not an option. If I let you go, you go to the cops. I go to prison. So it's either I put you on the ground or I put you in, put you in, a, in, a, in a storage container. Uh, in worst case, you stay there. In best case, I built you your own little hobbit house. Uh, they sell a lot better than free housing. I mean, you talk about a nice little house you build on it. I mean, it's not, it's not the best of all worlds. But, I mean, her biggest issue would be, you know, what movie to pick up her day, what she has for, for, for takeout, and uh, what's on TV. It's not the best of any worlds. She didn't have to have sex. They didn't really care. I had that taken care of. Just don't be y'all trying to escape. The only thing I want, don't, don't try to escape. I don't need the hassle. Um, am I sorry I held on to her? Yes. Am I, there's no way of answering that in a way because it, it's either it's yes or no, white or black. If I didn't hold on to her, I had to kill her. I think holding on to her was the better of both worlds. Um, looking back, if, if I had not just fired her, I'm sorry I didn't just go ahead and shoot her next to Charlie. I wish I had not held her. Uh, it really came back to bite me in the ass. Uh, the email came to my house. Uh, they had found it was over the phone where the phone had the laptop that it pinged was uh, within X amount of miles of my land. Uh, the search warrant, I don't think Holly would have covered it. I, I think the search warrant was nonsense. But like I told the cops, if the roles were reversed, I would have done it too. I mean, how does an ex-convict all of a sudden make all that money and have a property with two miles of chain link fence? You know, I want to know what's behind that fence too. You know, is it legal in regards to the cops? No. But I would have gone over the fence too. And they did. So, I'm not going to bitch too much about it. I would have broke the law to go find out what was behind the fence as well. Uh, you know, they went back, they, they, they searched the building illegally, they went to the building, they, they saw all the guns, they opened up the closet underneath the stairs, and all these assault rifles were all hanging on the wall, and there's this press gun, um, there was a, uh, uh, six hour mosquito with a suppressor hanging from the wall, and all these weapons are, are, are hanging around. There's a bare 50 cal that's in the other building. Uh, all these weapons. Obviously, something's going on here. They went to the other, they went to the, the shipping container, knocked on it, saw that it had five locks on it. Well, it had five locks because it's got five spots to put a lock. I just went ahead and bought as many locks as the lock as the door will hold. And I mean, she wouldn't have to go anywhere. I mean, it was if the locks were there long before she was. So I thought that was so the. Neighbors wouldn't break in and steal. You know, when, when uh, you know, I drive a $90,000 BMW and they live in a house down the country that probably cost thirty five, you're kind of asking for it. So I had extra locks on the building. Uh, protect my four-wheeler, protect my tools. Uh, they heard the chain rattle. They yelled for her. She didn't say anything. 
feet feet on it again when they heard the same row again. Then she finally went ahead and yelled, and they went ahead and got the grinders and cut the locks off and got in there and, and found her. Uh, after my arrest, uh, I went. I, went, I of course went to jail. Uh, there was there was no charges. I, I was getting piled on all these murder charges, all going on going. And I had uh, admitted to them. They took me to county jail, and I sat there and I started thinking. And it was actually in my favor to give them the other bodies. If they would have just left me alone, they would have got a lot more than that. But they weren't real happy about the fact that I had all these bodies around, and they did this right her her nose. Um, got to jail. Um, finally told them to, to, I want to talk to Clark. And I told them where Johnny and Johnny and Megan were, and they they couldn't find them. The the cadaver dogs couldn't find them, even though it was right there by the building. They picked me up, took me out there, actually asked me if I go out there. I did. Went out there, pointed out where the two bodies were, and marked it. Uh, and then they stood around for about half an hour, uh, gave me some food, and they brought me back to the jail. Uh, the next day, they said they couldn't find the bodies and were arguing with me that I was full of shit and that there was no bodies there, that I was playing games. And I'm like, no, there's Megan to the left, Johnny to the right, right where I told you they were. Um, to be back out there, to be back out to, to the spot, and they had taken a weed whacker or trimmer and they knocked all the, 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 the grass and the, all, that, all that area, you know, leveled it. And there was yellow jackets flying around. And they want me to go out there and mark them. I go, hell no. I'm not getting stung by those things. You want to get them marked, you go out there. I told you where they were. The guy doing the backhoe was 15 feet away from where I told him to dig. He's in a highly different spot. Uh, they went out, put little flags in, and she marked the dirt where, where Johnny was, marked the spot where Megan was. And surprisingly, uh, when they dug, they were exactly where I told them they were. Uh, Johnny's feet were also missing, but they said that the, 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 the feet had not been cut, the feet were not cut, nor sawed off, but they were twisted off. Well, I'm not the Incredible Hulk. I didn't snap uh, some guy's feet off. I mean, I'm not that strong, or anybody's that strong. Like I told him, go out there, I mean, it's a foot. It's a foot. Do you get out the foot? Dig down a foot, and you're gonna find a foot. I don't have them. Uh, they said they couldn't find them. Uh, I, I'm telling you, the feet are out there. I've never touched them. Even the FBI profiler said I don't do trophies and I don't do finishes. I mean, I'll kill you, but I'm not playing with you. Um, not my thing. Um, there was no mention of rape until four months later when all of a sudden I get informed that the attorney, attorney for Kayla, spoke to my attorney, and Kayla had said that she wanted all of my money, and that if I would just go ahead and sign uh, a document, giving her, giving her all of my money, all of my assets, without fighting for it, that she was not going to forced the weight charge on me. Okay. Honey, I, I'm facing how many murder charges here? I don't think weight charge is really my biggest problem right now. Not even close. Um, they were going to go on Dr. Phil. There was a two-day Dr. Phil special because for Valentine's Day because that's so romantic. We're going to talk about a girl in a box that was supposed to get raped every day, twice a day, you know, every position known to man, uh, for Valentine's Day. So Dr. Phil needs to really rethink about what, you know, romance is, because I'm pretty sure that's not it. Um, but then again, I'm not really a Dr. Phil fan anyhow. Uh, but they went out and just, they, they said that if I didn't give them sign over the money, that they were going to have me charged with rape. I told them it's not going to happen. Knock yourself out. And sure enough, a couple days later, Dr. Phil's show came out. They made a big deal about how I had, uh, uh, for two days, 
uh, twice a day, every day, um, had sex with her. And then Tom Clark came down, pulled me out of my cell, and informed me that uh, due to they had called in and due to pressure because of the show, that they were now going to charge me with rape, but that they basically had nothing on me for the rape. And if I wanted to get out of it and wanted to fight it, they just tell my attorney that uh, they're not even bothering with the rape. They're going after the, you know, the bodies. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not worried about the rape anyhow. Uh, one, I didn't do it, and two, I had, I had a lot of bodies to deal with. Uh, I got bigger problems. Uh, but then in court, I just said to hell with it. It's not worth sitting there for four years, going to court, where I'm going to lose anyhow, sitting in sit county jail. I'd rather go ahead and get on down to prison and go on with my life. Is there anything that you feel that could have been done for you between the first time you were incarcerated and the second time that could have kept you from being incarcerated the second time? A lot of things. When I never should have gone to an adult prison, I was 15 years old. I should have put it in a duty facility. They should have made room. They had a, a actual uh, program for young sex offenders. They should have gone ahead and made room for me uh, and put me in that program and made it happen. They said they had a very high success rate for offenders going to that program not reoffending. Well, they should have made room for me. Well, they didn't. And it is what it is. Um, in prison, there is no rehabilitation. It is, it is what, forget what the court tells you, forget what TV tells you. There's no training classes. There's no education. You have to fight tooth and nail to get anything to try to be, and basically you rehabilitate yourself and work your tail off for it. Uh, I was really rehabilitated because I chose to be. That was what I wanted. When I was released from prison, I had no parole. Arizona has soft time, hard time, and flat time. Flat time is you will do every day of your sentence. There is no parole. If you behave yourself, you go home in 15. If you're a total asshole every day that you're there, you go home at 15. So me behaving myself was a choice, not a, not a, not a demand. Um, flat time gives you no incentive at all. Why they get people that, I, it makes no sense. Uh, if you were to hear three or four times, I get it. But a first-time offender at 15, can you give me 15 years flat? What in the hell were you th What were you thinking was coming out of those walls? What in the hell did you think was coming home? You're lucky I came home this nice. I didn't jaywalk. I didn't steal. It was yes ma'am and no ma'am on everything. I wasn't going back to prison. I wasn't doing anything to make anybody uncomfortable. I wasn't trying to play a little badass role. I have no tattoos. I didn't shave my head and have Aryan Brotherhood across my back. I didn't do any little swastikas. I wasn't playing a little badass. I just went about my day and tried to fit myself into an office setting, do my job, be professional, and give no one any reason to question where I had been and what had happened in my past. My past was my past, not my future. I had no parole. The downside of that is I had no one to talk to, no one to check up on me. If I was having problems with somebody, nobody cared. When I did have problems, I contacted law enforcement, and they laughed at it. Their thing is, you put yourself on a sex offender website from when you were a kid, deal with it. I'm a citizen now. I pay my taxes, or at least I did then. I don't now. That's 10 years. But I paid my taxes. I did my thing. I'm, I'm now a free man. Law enforcement's supposed to be on my side. I'm not the one committing the crimes. They're still on my side. Instead, I'm still viewed as a criminal. And law enforcement didn't give a damn that I had people who wanted to stab me or hit me over the head with a hammer, making threats, making threats to everything that I had, my family, everything else. Well, if you're not here to help me, I'm going to help me. I think at that time, at any of those times, they could have 
had somebody step in and help address it. I had gone to law enforcement and they turned their nose up at it. I went to First Baptist Spartanburg, the church, and informed me, the assistant pastor, where I got informed, try another church. We don't have time for you. This is not, we don't want to, we don't have nothing to do with this. Yes, you've been going here for a year and a half. That's great. Love that you've been coming. But, uh, uh, yeah, go, go, go find another church. We ain't going to roll mess with this. Well, thank you. So, you know, when you need me and you want me to tie and put money in the, in the plate, oh, you're happy to pass the plate around. But when I need something, some advice, uh, some guidance, oh, you're just too busy with that. So, I'm really not a guy person anymore. Uh, I'm more I'm more of the introduction business. I'm, I'm really not going to do it to any church. Um, you want to meet God? I can make the introduction. Uh, and I left. And that led to two, two individuals meeting me in a parking lot with a knife and a hammer. And they really, for, for people who went to the sex offender website and found uh, Cole Hip, they found a young-looking white guy with no tattoos that they thought was an easy mark. And they really should have skipped the K's and gone on to the M's, maybe, maybe the P's. They should have picked another letter entirely and stayed the hell away from the middle of the alphabet. But it did not go their way. At any time, any of this could have been fixed, could have been changed, could have been addressed, if somebody would have basically offered to give me a moment of time and try to give me some guidance other than deal with it. Well, I dealt with it. I dealt with it the way I was taught in prison. Someone gets in your face, you kill them. I'm not going to let you get off the ground because I'm not going to let you hurt me. I- I'm not going to play with you. I don't, this is not a dance. This is not a, a, this is not a UFC match. There's no free caps and, and I give. At no time am I going to let you take me down and I'm going to get hurt. I'm all about efficiency because I don't want to be hurt. So I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to clean the scene. And then I'm going to leave. And for the most part, I never talked to anybody. I, I hinted with some people when I was trying to get some advice later on on how to guide my life without always jumping to this conclusion. But I mean, with Tony, I, I jumped around so much. I don't think Tony even had a clue what I was talking about because I was being around the bush so bad. Dustin knew what I'd been through. Dustin knew all about what I'd been through. But Dustin's only concern was, when did I need him to go buy another gun or another suppressor or pick up pills or do a errand or drop something off? He didn't give a shit other than what can he do to make some money so that he could go go do things he wanted to do. He didn't care who I killed, what I killed, or why I killed him, just did I get paid. So, a lot of things could have been done, but none of them did. And while I did try to, to back off and leave things alone, fix myself, um, it's kind of hard to do that. When someone gets in your face and all of a sudden they're telling you, what are, they, what are you going to do about it? Or you've got a weapon coming at you. Rust comes off and old habits come back. And here we are. Besides the two victims, the first two victims that you stabbed to death, why did you choose the method of shooting each victim to death? Clean. Learn how to shoot. Um, I don't want. I don't want to go long term with you. Any time you enter into a knife fight, somebody's gonna get cut, and usually it's both of you. Knife fighting is not what you see on TV. There, there's no um, Stephen Skull and let's go. You know, playing with knives back and forth. People are really getting cut. Usually both of you. Um, you know, I've had knife training, and the first thing is get in, get done, and get the hell off. You don't want to drag it out any longer than you have to. I'm not here to play with you. I'm not here to talk trash. I'm not here to call you names. If we're engaged in a fight, all that, all the time for talking shit and arguing and posturing is over with. It is now down to one of us, or maybe both of us, we're going to die today. I'm real adamant that it's you and not me. Uh, I 
don't want to die. I want to get done with whatever the hell this problem is. I want to clean up. I want to go pet my dog. I want to go drive my car. I want to go have a steak dinner with my girlfriend, go home, get some booty, and go to bed. Get up tomorrow, and I'm not even thinking about this problem anymore. I'm now thinking about a whole, you know, back in college, I'm thinking about tests. I'm thinking about classes. I'm thinking about stocks and bonds. I'm thinking about, you know, getting with my mom. I'm thinking about business and what deals I'm doing in real estate. I'm not focused on what happened yesterday. Yesterday I killed a few people. Okay, it happens. Let's move on. Tomorrow I've got to have I've got a two o'clock closing, a four o'clock closing. I've got to go up there and list a the house. Then I've got to come back and I'm going to run out of time for photographs. I've got to get the key, come back, photograph the house, put aside the front yard, come back two days later with the brochure that I did from the property, and get all entered in three hundred MLSs. Time is a premium, so I'm going to save myself and I take the time to learn how to shoot. I shoot my guns. About 400 rounds a day. Every day I shoot my guns. One day it may be uh, the, Glock tw- the, the Glock 22. The next day it may be the Beretta or a submachine gun, the MPX, um, the HK MP5, uh, one of the M4s. Every day I play with something. If it's a precision rifle, I may only shoot 40 rounds the whole day. It takes a little bit more to shoot a precision rifle because it's a thing called math. Point of impact to point of aim. You've got to get those two calibrated on target. There's a lot of stuff involved. So you and know, me only shoot 40 rounds the whole damn day. On a submachine, submachine gun day, I may shoot 1,200. But on a pistol day, 400 rounds. It's efficiency. Get on target, get done, and get clear. i got better things to do with my day. And if I can put two rounds in your center of mass before you can get me, I'm in a safer position. I'm not the one getting hurt. I'm also wearing body armor at the same time because, let's face it, I've been shot twice, and I don't like being shot. I got a five, five, six in my left knee. I took a 40 cal in my left hand. Neither one of them were fun days. Um, but unfortunately, body armor doesn't cover those two spots. So that's why I choose guns. I'm going to use whatever is the most efficient. Um, I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage with a, with a pistol if I can hit you with a rifle. I'm not going to engage you with a knife if I can hit you with a pistol. If I don't have if I don't have a knife, well, I'm not running over my car. But I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make it safe on me. Efficiency is everything. Protect me. I only got one of me. After you were arrested, investigators came across Amazon product reviews that you had wrote. I believe there were a couple hundred of them, which were all pretty chilling to read. Do you remember writing all the reviews? Oh, hell yeah. I've had a blast. I've had fun. Um, what, what's amazing is how many of them got, got approved and, and posted on Amazon, and how many of them got shot down and were not approved. But I was spending money... I'm a prime member. I love Amazon. I'm not going to the mall for nothing. Come Christmas time, if if my kid and my girlfriend or my mistress or my other mistress or whatever I got going on, everybody tell me what you want. I will go to Zales, you know, and I will walk in and tell my, I, you know, I need this, this, and I mean, I, I, I love Zales. <laughs> I got a Zales card. Um, triple flyer miles there. But you, uh, for everything else, I buy off of Amazon. And every day, I would get flooded with them bugging the hell out of me for reviews. Every time I bought gummy worms, or I bought a new taser, or I bought some tactical pouches, or some tacos. Um, tacos are a um, high-speed high speed gear um, mag, mag holders. Uh, you can attach your mags to your gear. Every time I buy something, they send me a request for a review. And if I don't have time to sit there and request it to review it, they wouldn't leave you alone. Every day I'm getting my email blown up with uh, this company and this company and this company all wanting me to review the product that I bought. I bought the product. I don't want to spend all day reviewing your stuff. 
and I would get bored and come nighttime uh, before girls would come over or sometimes early in the morning or whatever it is, um, I would sit there sometimes and drink a couple of bourbon and Cokes, Maker's Marker or whatever we serve, and drink my bourbon and get my laugh on. And I would type up whatever goofy thing I had come, come to mind. Uh, there was no weird. It was me having fun. You know, I bought a shovel. The shovel was designed because I, the, my car had got stuck out in the snow one time. I had to put uh, a bag of kitty litter underneath to get the car out, trying to dig down to down to the, the, the rocks to get it. Um, would have been a lot better if I had a shovel. The next day, I owned a shovel. But the day that it happened, I didn't own a shovel. So I bought one. It was a little camp shovel, like the military edition. And I thought it was funny. You know, it would have been, you know, considering I bought the little shovel, I should have bought the, uh, the midget upgrade. Um, I had all kind of fun making comments. A lot of those were me sitting around drinking and having a giggle fest while I typed up whatever little twisted thing I could and was surprised of what actually got posted and some of the ones that didn't. Believe it or not, the ones that, a lot of the ones that didn't get posted weren't that bad. But, yeah, I did all those. That was the end of fun. Did you ever think that they might draw attention to you? Yeah, yeah, looking back, I, I probably should have done that. Um, but, I mean, it goes back to my mentality of, uh, fuck it. I do what I want. I thought it was funny. Um, I didn't hide in the shadows. I mean, I was a real estate broker. I drove, you know, several BMWs. Um, I bought whatever I wanted. I flew planes. I flew helicopters. I, I did what I wanted to do. I mean, my mistress had a mistress. I was having a really good life. I was having fun. Um, I enjoyed myself. And when I would make little comments, I mean, I never thought anybody, as much as I told people what I did, more than a few people knew about war is. They just didn't believe it. I didn't hide it. I mean, Gary had come to my house several times, and I'm sitting there with an MP5 or a very, some other, you know, some machine gun or assault rifle on my desk working on it, doing some modifications. He knew I was an ex felon but it never dawned on him why I've got a submachine gun on my desk or why I've got a shoulder holster hanging off my office chair with a bird of 96 hanging off of it. Um, Tony, Tony came over to my house when I went, I showed him my new Barrett 50 Cal. I bought an M82A1. 50 Cal, 10 round box magazine, 31 pound, 31 pound rifle. Um, his only concern was could he, take, could he take a picture of it where he's looking like Rambo uh, holding the gun up one arm? It's not that hard to do when it doesn't have glass. You don't have a scope on it or a magazine yet. But um, he wanted to hold this big, big 50 caliber rifle up and take a picture. Ah, uh, whatever. You know, I didn't, hide, I didn't hide in the shadows. I hid right out in front of everybody and went, you yeah, know, here I am. What you going to do about it? Unfortunately, well... <laughs> Here I am now. I guess they did. Not bad. But, yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't give a shit. I, I said what I wanted on, on Facebook. I said what I wanted to on uh, Amazon. And um, looking back, yeah, I, I see what people say. They, they twist what I said. But at the time, I was just drinking and uh, having fun. I thought I was just having fun reviewing products, and nobody would really come back to going, is he really mean about, you know, shocking his agents with a taser? I'm not going to shock my agents with a taser. I'm just going to fire you if you don't sell enough homes. But I thought it was funny. You know, I like your humor. On November 3rd, 2016, you're served a search warrant, and a lot of people have seen the video. You seem pretty startled once they came to the door. After they found Kayla, and after you were arrested and finally in handcuffs, what was running through your mind at that time? Uh, going back to jail. Uh, I'm screwed. Um, you know, someone's going to take, you know, I'm going to lose my dogs, my house, my cars, my, everything's gone. Uh, I'm going back to prison. 
and uh, I'm screwing this up. I knew I was coming. I mean, I, 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 I ain't worried that the cops would show up. I, I know that once the cops show up in your front, front yard, once they have a reason to look at you, you're screwed. They were looking at anything and everything but me for the longest time. I knew the day that I did it that I screwed up with the fuck. I knew I screwed up. I wasn't planning on killing them. I wasn't planning on doing a damn thing with them other than let them trim the trees, pay them the money, and then later on letting Kayla come back to my house and uh, get in over a sofa. You know, thank you, please come again. I just did. Be no big deal. Once they start looking in your direction, you better find a damn good reason to look somewhere else. But once they start looking, I mean, it, it, it's not, this isn't law and order. You don't just, once they start looking, they're going to keep bothering you. They're going to find a way to get around the little laws of search warrants. They pulled up, they started asking me questions. I tried to avoid the questions, but I mean, even my story that I had in my head, I didn't stick to it. You know, all I had to do was tell them, yeah, I hired her, they showed up, they did the job, they got paid, they left. Nothing else. They knew what time she did with the Texans. They knew roughly when she left, you know, as far as the land goes. I should have just stuck to my story. Instead, I started modifying it as I went, and I screwed it up. Um, they wanted to go to the house looking for cell phones. I got cell phones all over that house. I got burner phones, I got cell phones, I got all this. I don't have her phone. They want to search the house. The problem is the house is covered in submachine guns, suppressors, and body armor. Uh, every room has at least two guns. Every room has magazines for the guns for the room before it. Once you start searching my house, I'm an ex-felon. Either way, I'm screwed. I'm like, well, shit. I don't think I can get out of this. If they go to search the land, they're going to find her. I knew days before that they'd make her search the land. But I was willing to go ahead and roll the dice. And my attitude was, fuck it. If you don't search and you don't find her, I will address the issue another day. If you do search and you do find her, oh, well, there she is. Do what you got to do. Um, I really didn't want to kill her. Didn't like her, but didn't want to kill her. So, yeah, I was going to let fate, fate decide. Fate and karma, unfortunately, both of them bit me in the ass. Um, but I was calm at first. I mean, first I'm like going, oh, shit. And then I'm like, oh, right, well, here we go again. Let me get on down to prison, get me a TV, you know, let me go on about my day. This is going to really suck ass. Um, but I knew I'd never go on death row. I knew day one I'd never go on death row. So that wasn't a concern. After you're arrested, and after you confess to the other crimes, you're ultimately charged with seven counts of murder, two counts of kidnapping, and three counts of possessing uh, murder weapons. And you ultimately pled guilty and uh, received seven life sentences, plus 60 years. After you finally were convicted and handed down your ultimate death sentence, you know, the seven life sentences, how did you feel? How did I feel? Well, anything after the first life sentence is kind of a waste of time. Um, you know, I'm not a cat. I, I, you know, they had come around. I, I knew, I knew right off the, off the bat, death row was not going to happen. I told my attorney to calm down. They're not even going to try it. Uh, it. It basically comes down to real simple. I know where my bodies are. I know where their bodies are, too. I'm never going to be on the stand. Don't sweat the small shit. I'm never going out of prison. I'm never going past expenses. I know that. But I'm never going to be on death row. So everybody calm down. Um, I knew they were going to pull this. Uh, we get to court. They offered a plea bargain at four months. At seven months, I went ahead and accepted it. My one and only court hearing on the criminal matter was my sentencing. I was like, just get it over with. I mean, why throw all this out and go to TV and play back and forth and, oh, no, I didn't do it, and then all this nonsense. You're not going to put 
bring me on the jury trial because you're not going to put me on the stand in front of 12 people where you're not sure what I'm going to say. Well, I may talk about my body, and I may talk about somebody else's. You just never know. Tell me I wasn't, that's not going to happen. I'm like, all right. Um, they were in a rush to hurry up and give me the time and get me the hell out of that jail. At seven months, they intentionally did it the day before the three-day Memorial Day weekend, notified nobody other than at the last minute that I was on the docket for a court hearing. It was not on the docket as a sentencing. Entirely hid what it was for. Nobody thought it was uh, about the criminal charges. They thought it was about the civil. Walk, swap picked me up, brought me in, uh, had, the, had the hearing, and then rushed me out of here and rushed me down to prison. They wouldn't even keep me in the county jail for the weekend. I was immediately moved to intake at, at, at the prison in, in uh, Columbia, where I was immediately put. The response team showed up to escort me around, and I, they locked the entire complex down to move me around. They thought I was like Hannibal Lecter. They had no idea what I was. If they had had a dolly and a face mask, I would have been wearing it. Uh, put me in a locked-up room, and that's where I stayed for uh, 84 days while they tried to figure me out. But the whole time in court, I'm standing there. Uh, they brought the families in. They all got to read their impact statements. And the whole time I'm standing there, my thing went through my head, believe it or not, was I hope when I stood up that this jumpsuit isn't wedged up in the crack of my ass and everybody's seeing this, this thing wedged up the crack of my ass. I was more worried about my pants being in the crack of my ass on TV than the seven like sentences plus 60. I never spent the lift as long anyhow. I've been shot twice. I've almost crashed a helicopter in training. I almost crashed a, 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 a Cessna of a, a 152 and a 172 in training. Um, no, it was one, one two. I didn't crash the 172. Um, I've almost had, I've had issues with, with, in flight training, and I had to get through it, mostly because I kept flying in bad weather because that's the only time nobody else wanted to fly, and I could easily get the time. So most of my flight, flight training was in bad weather. Um, well, you get what you ask for. Um, but my time in court wasn't that big of a deal. I just figured, okay, well, what's the difference? One life, seven life, 25 lives. What, what the hell's the difference? You can't live them all. So uh, I'm not going to argue with you about uh, the rape charge when I'm really facing time I can't do now. Let's like, screw it. Let's, let's just sign this and get on about our day. I got things to do. Well, I may be flippant about it, but it comes a point in time where if you can't change it, if you can't change it, and nothing you do is going to make an impact on it, why fight it? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Are you currently in uh, protective custody due to your high-profile status? No, I've been in protective custody in three years. Uh, when I first came down, SWAT picked me up, brought me down here, turned me over to Kirkland, um, which is intake. They held me in uh, uh, D60, which is a walkout room. They didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to act. They thought they were getting um, Michael Myers or Jason's, something off one of these horror flicks, uh, the crap you see on uh, Criminal Minds. I'm an office professional. If you don't screw with me, I'm not going to screw with you. If you feel the need to dance with me, understand, I'm not going to fight you. I'm just going to kill you. Then I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing, and I won't be left alone. They realized that. Well, they couldn't figure what to do with me. So after 84 days, since I refused to sign the paper to go to voluntary PC, they had me committed as involuntary PC. And I was hauled next door to statewide PC. This is, where they have, this is where they hold most of the cops that get arrested, uh, really bad child molesters, and most notably the gang members who have done a lot of crime against their own gang, got busted violating their own gang, stealing from them, and now their own gang wants to kill them. I can't stand any of them. Uh, I want to see them all dead. 
I don't like criminals. I don't want you messing with me. Don't steal from me. Don't touch me. We won't have a problem. If, if you can't understand that, uh, don't worry about it because you're not going to be here long enough to matter because I'm going to kill you. Uh, they took me over there for a number of months. I was told that I would be there um, between five years to into forever. Uh, over Christmas time, the state police sled called in because they had issues with hand tracings and uh, things of mine showing up for sale online, and they decided to have a hissy fit about it. And they went ahead and locked me down, put me in an isolation room, and I was held in isolation for, for two months, during which time Sled searched my room twice, and they just tore everything to pieces, took all my photos, uh, the last photos of my mom, they took them, um, uh, letters, my books, whatever they get their hands on, they took. So when I got, finally got out of isolation, all that was gone. Um... While I was in isolation, one of the guys that was in PC liked to do legal work. I had nothing to do with it, didn't know jack about it, never even knew he was doing it, but he did a class action uh, against the state based on the conditions of prison, the conditions of, of PC, and how we were being treated. Nobody in the dorm knew anything about it until the mail lady came by and she issued out 28 packets, which at that time there was 28 inmates, 28 packets to everybody in the dorm that served paperwork, recognizing that the judge had stated that we were going to, that uh, the lawsuit would, would proceed, but would not be a class action, that it had to be an individual person by person account. This then went on the news that with my name, that I had filed it. I didn't know a damn thing about it. But that I had filed it along with 2,700 other unnamed inmates. So the guy who actually got it started never had his name on, on TV. My name was everywhere. They came to me at, at seven months of being in PC. Came to me with these papers said, do you want to be here or do you want to go to general population? I want to go to general population. If you want to kill me, get it all. I've had professionals try to kill me. I've had amateurs try to kill me. I'm not scared of you. And even if I am scared, I'm still going to step forward. I'm not going to hide from somebody. If you want to do it, do it. And I'm definitely going to try to take you with me. But yeah, I'll sign. So they brought me a piece, a, a waiver to get me out of statewide PC. I signed it. They told me to pack my stuff that I would be moved in an hour. That didn't happen. They came back an hour later and had to sign the document again, but they wanted another copy of the waiver. Not a problem. I signed it. Then an hour after that, I was moved to the Moultrie, Moultrie dorm at Broad River. That is general population. Uh, since then, I've gone to Murray, and then now I'm over here at, uh, uh, what is this, Marion. Either way, all of this is general population. So no, I'm not in. I'm not in PC. Shortly after you were convicted, there were a few lawsuits put forth against you. Uh, some of the relatives from the bike shop victims filed a lawsuit against you. Then on December first, Kayla had filed a civil suit against you, seeking more than three hundred sixty-three million dollars, and she was actually awarded six point three million. Do you think she deserved that compensation from you? Hell no, she deserves to be forced, or she don't suit her own self. If they will go through the files, it's right in front of them. Go through the email, go through, I'm, I'm sorry, not email, go through the Facebook private messages between us, and go in between our, our text messages. Before any of this ever happened, she asked me to kill somebody for her. Some guy that she was fucking with, not Charlie, this is before Charlie, oh, but she's just still messing with Charlie, but somebody stole her drug money and she wanted them killed. She offered me money and, and, and sex to kill some guy that pissed her off. I'm not going to kill you for $200 and a shot of ass. Especially since the way you're going to get the $200 is to give me another shot of ass. So basically, you're going to give me two shots of ass. 
because I'm going to have to give you the 200 bucks because you ain't got it. I'm not killing somebody for two shots of booty. Hey, man. Uh, she sent me a message back and forth talking about how, oh, she, she, already, she already knew from dusk that I had people, that I knew people. My response to her was, I don't have people, honey. I am people. I put in my own work, and I'm still not doing it for you. I'm not killing some guy because he screwed you out of some dope or didn't or, or, or didn't do what you wanted him to do. That's not my concern, not my problem. Um, she set Charlie up. She's a drug junkie. She is constantly doing something. The woman should be in prison. Yes, I was wrong for what I did. I fully admit to it. Never should have held her captive. Never should have shot Charlie. Never should have done a lot of things. But if they'll go through the files, they'll see she needs to be in prison her own damn self. Since then, it's funny how all of her fiancés keep getting killed. You know, her, one of her last fiancés supposedly what? Stabs themselves in the chest? Really? Who's got the balls to stab themselves in the chest? I don't even have the balls to stab myself in the chest. And mine are metallic. I said all metal tickers with these damn things. And I'm not going to stab myself in the chest. Hell no. You don't tell me this little guy stabbed himself in the chest? Really? And then she stood there for 30 minutes, and then they finally responded with 911, and he didn't make it? Uh, I don't buy it. I think they had another argument about drugs. Anytime you take away Kayla's drugs, she goes, she goes from being calm to batshit crazy faster than anybody I know. You talk about her drugs until she can't have drugs, that woman's going to get violent. Trust me, I've watched it. I've watched it up close. Dustin has watched it up close. The whole argument of why he got stabbed is when he told her not to stop, stop getting high so damn much, and she's standing with a fork. Um, I think she killed her. I think she killed her fiance. I think she's standing in the chest, and then she went, "Oh shit! What have I just done? I'm going to get busted." She called the police, and they let it. But they blew it over. The fact is that every time something happens with her, it's, "Oh, you were the girl held in the building. Oh, it's not your fault." No. There's a reason why you were in that building, and while I fully admit my wrong part of it. You need to understand your part, too. You weren't just randomly picked going, ooh, here, here, come here, pretty girl. Let me put you in a building. You were not my sex slave. This was not what that was for at all. Um, then she got in a fight with her, got in a fight with her, her after, after he died, that guy died, she got a new boyfriend, fiance. She gets in a fight with him on a day that she's supposed to be going to court with me. And it's at the end of going to jail her own self. So, no, I, I really don't think she deserves the money at all. Um, I think a lot of this case has turned into going for the money. I mean, I had lawsuits filed against me before I even had all my charges. I didn't even get hit, hit with a rape charge until four months later. Four months later, I got hit with a rape charge. They couldn't even hit it. They weren't even an early charge. Uh, and they had already hit me right off the bat with all the lawsuits. Um, do I think some of the people may have been made with the money? Maybe. Um, I can see parts of it. But a lot of people who I end up killing were people who like Johnny. Johnny sued me for $27 million. Johnny's mom sued me for $27 million. The judge put a decimal in it. All of a sudden now it's 27 He's still not going to get it, but either way, $2.7 million. My comment in court was, why the hell are we paying this man? I gave you a legitimate job to do a legitimate day's worth of work, $450 cash for eight hours of labor. You and your woman cleaning bathrooms, refrigerators, stoves, and the floor in the kitchen. Just make the places livable. The new winners are going to clean it anyhow. Just make it to where when they walk in to look at it, they're not going, ooh, this is disgusting. I don't want that. Pop, you know, vacuum the floor, pop in a few air fresheners. I'm going to give you the air fresheners. Grade the hell out of this building. 
air fresheners are, are they're, they're, they're cheap and they're tax deductible. I buy them by the crate. Let's hear it for Costco. Um, but I mean, I offer him, I offer, I offer these people a job. Now you're going to tell me that he comes at me, pulls a knife on me, tries to stab me in the back. He started the fight, and he lost. As the old joke goes, you brought a knife to a gunfight. Do you pick the fight with me? I mean, I can lose, but the odds are not in your favor at this point. Even on my bad day, I've had more training than most people. Um, not a smart move. Can I lose? Hell yeah, I can lose. I got holes in my body because I've lost a few times. I've got the shit knocked out of me a couple times. Just understand I'm getting back up. And this fight ain't over. I didn't hear that. Until one of us was dead, there ain't no bell. I didn't hear any ringing going off. Um, maybe, it's ringing, maybe it's ringing in my ears, but uh, I'm getting back up. And I'm coming. But you're going to tell me, you're going to pull a knife on me, and then now I'm going to take, because you pull a knife on me, and I win the fight that you picked. I now have to give you $2.7 million? Why are we rewarding criminals and rewarding criminals who lost? I mean, you've already got me doing the time. I'm already doing a life sentence for both of those people. Why are we rewarding these people? They were robbing people. They were taking stuff. They got uh, accused of breaking into a vape shop. Their baby, their baby tested positive for heroin. Heroin. This is not minor stuff. Their baby tested positive for heroin. And now you want me to give them $3.7 million? Hell no. You can sue me all you want. I'm not giving it to you. I mean, I have the money. But I mean, hell, I can't even get to it anymore. The running, the running joke over there is, is not only did uh, um, you know they sued me, and and, and 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 as far as going against against uh, my assets, they recovered five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Okay, they can split that up after the attorneys get their portion first, because you know attorneys don't work for free. So after they after they get their forty percent, first they get split up. But the money I had stashed, the funny part is, I can't keep it e either. I can't get access to it. So it's what's called sit where it sits. Um, oops. You know, I'll never see it again, but neither will they. But yeah, they hit me with 2.7 on that one. Uh, Kayla got 6.3. This long, long list of, of medical bills. They gave me a spreadsheet of all these medical bills. The funny thing is, they padded the hell out of that. And it's funny how it's fifty thousand dollars for in-house rehab. It's twenty-five thousand dollars for out-of-house, out -house, whatever outpatient rehab. Uh, Doctor Phil paid for that. Doctor Phil agreed to take care of her rehab. So why am I getting hit with the bill? Of course, she's had to go back a few times, but you know, either way. Um, I guess hooked on rehab didn't work for her, but they wanted, uh, uh, she got 6.3. She'll never see it. Johnny's parents got a uh, 2.7, uh, Ponder, let's see, Ponder, Guy, Lucas, and Carver. They never told me how much I owed and they never bothered to take me to court over the Megan or, or, uh, Sherbert. I haven't been to court on those two. And now I've got the lawsuit against me from Academy Sports, which has turned into a national gun grab. So that's not really about money. That's that's about a lawsuit about gun, gun control. In August of 2018, a lot of your personal belongings that meant a lot to you were auctioned off and your house and property were later sold for half a million dollars. How did you feel when your personal belongings that meant a lot to you were auctioned off? Piss me off. Uh, basically pissed me off. Uh, it, it, it's funny how I'm the monster, everybody hates me, blah, 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 you know, all this, but all the vultures can show up and they all want a piece of, of what I had. They want signs and Q-tips and pins I drew with, uh, coffee mugs, T-shirts. Everybody wanted stuff. To remember the monster, uh, everybody wanted the cars, the motorcycles, uh, 
you know, they went, they keep bugging me looking for gold, hidden gold, and airplanes. And the caveat on that was is the prosecutor told them that they could not sue me and get all get all the money if I was still in, in court on going back with, with the death row for uh, the death penalty. Some of them really didn't want me to die. They didn't believe in it. Others did, but they, they believed in getting paid more. And money ruled the day. They wanted my money. They thought that I was, I was going to give them each, you know, millions and millions of dollars to each person, and they were going to go out there and have a good old day. The state receiver came down to see me and wouldn't even see me, see me in person. He had to see me with, with belly chains on through a piece of glass, even though at the, end of the, at, the end of the, at the end of the glass, I could just walk around to the other side. But, no, I had to stay there. And he demanded that I give him, as I quote, the hidden gold, the helicopter, and the airplane. Okay, first of all, I have never owned gold in my life. I'm not a pirate. I don't have hidden gold. There is no gold. But as I told him, if I had gold, what part of hidden do you not get? I don't owe you shit. If I had hidden gold, why would I give it to you? That's the whole part of it being hidden. Dumbass. Some of these guys need to seriously cut, do a little more thinking come out of law school. His comment was that I would be in contempt of court. Okay, no disrespect to the judge, but I'm really not worried about 30 days contempt of court. I've got seven consecutive life sentences plus 60. Let's just call it nine life sentences. 30 plus 30 is nine life sentences. I'm really not worried about contempt of court. Uh, I'm not giving you gold. I don't have gold to give you. The helicopter was a rental. The airplanes were rentals. All those planes you see, to, see in, in general aviation, a lot of those owners, if there's multiple owners for the aircraft, they are hugely expensive. The taxes are hugely expensive. The maintenance is even more so expensive. They rent them out. All you have to do is be a licensed pilot and prove that you are checked out on that model, that type of aircraft. If you fly a, a, a Goldstream G4, you can rent a Goldstream G4. If you want to fly a G5, you go out to the airport, you sign it out, the instructor comes out and actually puts you through a check ride on the G5. An hour later, you are now checked out on the G5. Same thing for a Cessna, a Beechcraft, or any other aircraft. Once you check it, once you know how to fly one, you know how to fly the other one. But you've got to prove that you know where all the controls are and all the settings. Uh, weight loading, uh, center of gravity, all that. It's all, it's all in the flight book, but you've got to prove that you know what you're doing. No one's going to give you a million dollar or a $20 million aircraft to screw up. You need to show that you know how to fly that one. And then you can rent it. I don't own any aircraft. I lease aircraft. Um, the receiver went on to talk about how, oh, uh, well, he, you know, we've been told you have aircraft. Who in the hell told you that? Oh, well, one of the victims. Victims' families. How the hell would you know? You've never met me. How the hell would you know if I own an aircraft? Because you got a bunch of photos of me in aircraft? I mean, I've flown all kinds of things. 152s, 172s, 182s, King Airs, Citations, Air Specials. I've flown all kinds of stuff. I love airplanes. Still not a, still not a member of the Mile High Club. Why? I'm too damn busy flying the airplane. I ain't got time for sex in the cockpit. This ain't no TV show. I'm trying to fly this bird, and I sure as hell don't want to wreck it. So, you know, no offense, but I'll get dirty when I get back on the ground. I am not doing it in the cockpit. When everybody wanted money, everybody wanted to get paid, um, they're still wanting to get paid. They, they, sold, the, they sold the land for 500000 Uh Somebody got a hell of a deal. I mean, hell, there's $80,000 fence around that property, uh, a 2,400-square-foot uh, garage building with full solar kit, everything included in it, bathroom, and all the stuff I did to it. That land is worth a hell of a lot of money. Um, 
they sold the house after they wrecked it. Um, the cops destroyed the bathrooms. I mean, seriously? Um, I see why cops get divorced. Nobody knows how to put the damn seat down and flush it. It's just freaking disgusting. Uh, they trashed the house. They tore all the carpet out of the house. The house got trashed. They sold it. Uh, the most of, most of it got, got uh, sold. The four-wheeler got sold. They went out to my land, and they whatever they could get their hands on that wasn't already stolen by the cops or stolen by neighbors or people walking through got sold. My safe, I had three safes, $13,380 in the office safe got confiscated. My charges are not financial. But you confiscated my money from the safe. It had nothing to do with you. And the sheriff held on to it. He never did give it back. Um, took all the computers. I understood that one. Took uh, my camera. Didn't really get that one. Um, and all knowing. Uh, took all kinds of stuff from the, from the land. But they went, the, the safe that was at my land, they broke the safe. They broke into the safe. Um, they asked my girlfriend for the code. My girlfriend didn't even know I had the safe. I'm not going to tell my girlfriend things that's going to get her in trouble. She didn't even know I had the safe. Had nothing to do with it. At all. That's why the damn thing was out there underneath the stairs at the land. <clears throat> so instead of calling the locksmith in to call up Century Safe and get the, uh, the default code for the, uh, the emergency override for the company, they broke the safe wide open. And somehow forty thousand dollars cash and three three uh, automatic weapons came up missing. Never went on inventory. I had an M4, uh, an MP5 SD2, and I had which is with a suppressed barrel, and a G3 that I stole from Mexico. One of the times I went to Mexico, somebody dropped a G3. G3 is the full auto version of the HK91. I picked it up and I kept it. <laughs> All those weapons came up missing, not on inventory. Um, I, I hope the deputies are enjoying them. So I just paid for somebody's uh, uh, shooting and a gambling night. But yeah, they sold they sold everything they get their hands on. Uh, the ammo and the guns went to the sheriff's office. He tried to hold on to them as long as he could. I imagine he kept all the ammo. Uh, the guns eventually went to ATF. The victim's families actually petitioned to get all the guns. They wanted the guns. All the guns I had, they wanted them, or they wanted to, to have possession so they could sell them, which makes no sense to me because if you killed my family with, with, with a gun, I don't want the damn gun. I don't want the money from the gun. <laughs> I want you to take a torch and a chop saw and cut the, cut the damn gun in half you kill my kid with a gun, that gun's going to die. I want the gun cut up. I want the gun cut up, melted down, where it can never hurt anybody ever again. Oh, no. They don't, they don't want to do that. They want to sell the gun. So maybe somebody else kills with that gun. But who gives a shit because you made the money on that gun and you got a new bass boat. So as long as you have a new Michael Kors person watching a bass boat, you don't give a shit. So it all comes down to money at the end. Well, they got to split $560,000 uh, after the attorneys, after the split, and uh, that's all they're going to get. I think they're going to good to get that. So, Todd, do you think there are any misconceptions about you in the public eye? Hell yeah. I mean, you've got people who want to do the old old standards of, uh, oh, I, you know, I start fires, or I piss the bed, or, you know, I was cruel to animals. Okay, yes, I Clorox the goldfish. Guilty as charged. I killed a fish. I am sorry for killing the fish. It was not intentional. But it's a goldfish, folks. It's just a goldfish. Uh, the dog wasn't shot by me. It was a BB gun. It was my neighbor. I've already covered that. I didn't do that. I beat the, the guy who did it. I beat his ass. Um, he got into huffing, and he's so he, he's a vegetable. 
he don't even know his own name anymore. Um, why people do? I don't know why people do that. But I mean, he, he, he's 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 in his own hell. He ain't got to do another damn thing to him. He he brought his own hell with him. Um, I'm not a sexual deviant. I don't want to handcuff you. Um, I don't do this S N D D S L. I don't know all these freaking letters. I don't get it. I just want to get my fuck on. I'm a guy. I want sex. I like sex. If I got to pay for sex, I'm not whatever. I like sex. I like two women at a time. Three if I can get a discount. Women are freaking awesome. Um, I like women. My bad. Um, I'm not freaky. I don't want to get it on. Um, was Kayla a sex slave? No. Was Megan? No. Was anybody else? No. Do I do, uh, uh, what is that stuff called? Human trafficking? No. I've been asked if I was involved in Epstein and uh, Prince Andrew. Never met either one of them. Entirely different environment. Entirely different side of the, side of the pond. Wouldn't be around those guys if he touched for any reason. No idea. Um, I did not stalk Megan. There are rumors that I stalked her at Waffle House, that they threw me out and I was ordering six eggs and cheese. First of all, I don't eat Waffle House. Now, if you had said I'd gone to IHOP or I'd gone to the Steakhouse, yeah, guilty. I don't eat Waffle House. Can't stand the noise, can't stand the yelling, don't like the small coffee, coffee cups, don't like Waffle House. Can't repeat it enough, don't like Waffle House. Anybody who's got a coffee cup that damn small is a communist and should be shot on sight. Something wrong with you. Uh, you just don't like America. Coffee cup that small, you don't like America. Give me a real damn coffee cup. Um, never been in a robot Waffle House. Never go eat Waffle House. Did not stalk her. The only time I ever met her was when I saw her on the side of Repo Road in Blackstock, right by the, by the on-ramp to get on I-26. So, don't know where that came from. Never got thrown out of a Waffle House. If I had been thrown out, the cook who did it would have been on a milk cart in two days. I'm not going to take crack for some guy. It ain't going to happen. You're going to throw me out? You could ask me to leave, and I will leave without a problem. You throw me out? I'm going to put you 40 cows in your chest. You're going home, you're going home with me. I'm keeping you. That's not going to happen. I don't take shit from guys. Um, not gonna happen. So yeah, I didn't stalk her. Never knew her on the on the, on the side. Never knew she even worked at Waffle House. <clears throat> there are people who claim that they knew me and friends of mine who want to come out of the woodwork. Everybody had their hand out for money constantly when they were around me, and I usually put money in your hand. It was cheaper to pay you off than worry about it. I made a lot of money. I didn't care. But it's amazing how many people had their hand out for money, and I was all good. Didn't give a shit when I told you about war as or that I had had an altercation. But when all of a sudden I'm in prison, oh, I'm the monster now. I'm the monster now. You know, um, Justin didn't have a problem with anything when I'm putting cash in his hand. He's buying guns and suppressors and going and buying all this stuff for me. Oh, but I'm the I'm the bad guy. Afterwards. Um, you know, Holly, my mistress, goes on, on People Magazine and Inside Edition, which I got to watch. Oh, you always felt uncomfortable. You were fucking me for 10 years. For 10 years, you worked for me in real estate. You showed up almost every morning with the two biscuits from McDonald's. I got booty, blowjob, and a biscuit. The three B's of life. Blowjob, booty, and a biscuit. And then you went on wherever you were going to do your work. You weren't that uncomfortable. I bought you whatever the hell you wanted. Oh, but I'm the creepy guy once I get arrested. That's funny because two weeks prior to this, oh, baby, oh, baby, will you buy me something? Funny how the things change. Um, you know, once, 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 once you can't do something for somebody... It's amazing how everything changes with people. Once you can't do shit for them. But when you can do something for them, 
Kentucky Chief Panthers tickets for the football game. Take care of your car bill. Um, buy you that dress you wanted. Buy you that necklace, whatever hell you wanted. Oh, then it's, it's, oh, well, you know, no big deal. When the money's gone, then all the, then all the attitude comes out. Then, I, then, I'm, then I'm a son of a bitch. Then I'm the monster. Yeah. I just don't buy it. Yeah, I, I've killed a lot of people. I accept it. Shit happens. But if you got killed by me, you put yourself on that field. One way or the other, you put yourself on that field. I didn't just show up at your front door and went, hmm, today is your day. You, you put yourself there. It's still my fault, it's still my trigger finger, it's still my, my, my issue. I'll take my blame for it. But there's two sides of this coin. It isn't just all of a sudden you show up at your front door out of nowhere. Um, in 2017, your mother died of natural causes. Uh, I believe she had heart disease and COPD. How did her death impact you? It didn't. I really didn't care. I mean, I hate to be mean about it, but I never really had a mother. My mother, she might have been a good person. I don't know. She married nine times. Somebody valued her. I would have loved to have had a mother. But mine constantly passed me off to my grandparents over and over and over again. Um, she get a new man, then she'd bring me back. Then she'd lose the man, and she'd put me back to my grandparents. I got shoveled to my dad. I got shoveled to my grandparents. I got shoveled off to camp. Um, for three and a half months, I got shoveled off to, to the Georgia State Institute down in Atlanta when they thought I just couldn't get along with other kids. Basically, they just wanted me out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, I gave her $100,000 one time when I had made all the money to pay off her house. Instead, she went to Cracker Barrel and bought every knick-knack known to man, didn't pay the house down at all. Her comment to me was, what about me? You'll be okay, but what about me? Mom, I just gave you $100,000. I don't understand. What do you mean about you? Pay off your house. Whatever problems we had in the past, we'll get over it. There's a hundred thousand dollars. There's a hundred thousand reasons for you to just not be upset. She took the money. Money was fine, but that was it. Um, all she did was chase my grandfather for money. Uh, he he was alive. She wanted her inheritance for, her inheritance early. The man's not dead. You don't get it. If he wants to, oh, it, you know, I, I hate entitlement. Nobody on this planet owes you a damn thing. If they give it to you, you have two words. Thank you. Be grateful. Learn to say thank you. I appreciate what you've done for me because nobody owes you a damn thing. But they did. Instead, she wants it now. She thinks it's owed to her. Um, very, very, very much an energy vampire. I didn't want to argue with her, so I just decided to walk away and just not deal with it. Uh, she made it clear all the years that she didn't really care what happened to me. I mean, out of, out of 15 years in prison, <clears throat> she didn't bother to visit me but one time, and it took her until 11 – I was in prison for 11 years before she came to visit me. Now, during that time, she'd been to Cancun, Vegas, uh, St. Croix, St. Thomas, the Bahamas – all over the damn place. But she couldn't come see her son until at the very end when I was getting out. And she was single. So she didn't have a husband at that time. She came and got me and brought me home. Thank you. I most appreciate it. I believe I gave her a hundred when I could afford it. It took a while, but when I could afford it, I gave her a hundred thousand reasons to say, you know, I thank you. Here you go. And she flew it. Um I had signed over power of attorney. My goal was to give her access to some of my accounts, not all of them, but some of my accounts. I would not give her access to the escrow account because that's not my money. That belongs to other people, and the real estate commission took possession of it and gave it back to those that belong to. I don't steal. It's not my money to touch. I gave her access to certain accounts, and my goal was to have her give the money to my girlfriend to help her raise her daughter and to make sure that uh, – Kylie went went to college. But I, I had gone ahead and 
signed over a power of attorney. And I didn't want my girlfriend involved in it. I wanted to keep her name out of it. I did not want the kid, did not want the daughter to have any more impact than she had to. Okay? The, the cameras were everywhere. They were going nuts. Um, both myself and my attorney had both told my mom to stay off the damn camera. My mom wanted the attention very much so. She wanted the attention. Nobody even tied in her last name of Tay with me. Um, the media left her alone. We both told her it was 48 hours. She didn't want to make to, to, to speak with them. We both told her, don't do it. If you want your privacy in life, leave it the hell alone. She promised both of us that she wouldn't do it. And as soon as she left dinner, <clears throat> she called him anyhow and did the interview. Of course, as soon as she did the interview, uh, news fans were in her front yard, and then all of a sudden it was, I was the bad son that, you know, I had ruined her reputation. Mom, no one even knew who she were until she told them. Uh, but you just had to have the attention. Heaven forbid someone else had more attention than you. You had to have it. Um, I had given her power of attorney on two of the accounts in order to get cash to give to my girlfriend to help pay, to, to help raise uh, her daughter because I, would, I wanted to make sure she had school clothes and normal. So I'm not giving you money to hide. I'm not trying to hide hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not giving you the BMWs. I'm not giving you stuff I know you're going to go after. I'm trying to take care of a 10-year-old girl to make sure that she basically has a roof over her head, and I want to make sure that I pay for her college because it's important to me that she get an education. That's it. The family's had a meltdown about how dare I give money away. It's not your money. It's mine. Why aren't you busting my balls? Over me giving money to a 10 year old. I'm not getting the money. I haven't asked for a damn dime. Leave the kid alone. My mother took the money and then decided to tell me that she was going to keep it. I was a bad son. I don't give a shit I'm a bad son. You're taking money away from a 10 year old girl. I mean, really? Well, then she needs money, I'll give it to her. No, she's not. Give her the money. She don't, she don't need to ask you for anything. It's not. They've been in my life for eight years. You haven't bothered to be in my life for nine. Nine years she couldn't be bothered. After I got arrested, she took the cash. She spent it. Wouldn't give it to anybody. She kept all the money. Uh, while my girlfriend was trying to clean up the house and figure out what in the hell just came through the house after the cops had torn everything up, her, her husband... My mom's husband came through, stole all the TVs, stole the pressure washer, the carpet shampooer, the vacuum cleaners, and started running off with PlayStations and anything they get their hands on. People I haven't seen for nine years all of a sudden feel entitled. There goes that word again, entitlement, to my shit. It's not yours. If anything, it should belong to my girlfriend and her kid. They, they were over there almost every night for eight years. I came across a page on Facebook, the name being TKSK, that makes daily updates about you. Do you have somebody running that page for you? Uh, well, they're not doing it for me. They're, they're doing it themselves. Uh, they do have my support. My, they have wanted to do a page. Um, my Davis wanted to do a page on there. Uh, he's doing a very fine job. My comment to him, if he wanted my support... Was I want nothing on their derogatory towards the victims. Uh, I will make my comments. I will answer questions. I will post all kinds of stuff, but nothing derogatory towards the families. I'm not going to antagonize them, cause them any problems. Um, we won't go down that page, and he, he has honored that. So the man's done a very fine job uh, with the page. Uh, that's also in regards to me doing the book uh, SK, SK 101, A Dark Humor Guide to Becoming a, a Serial Killer. Uh, updates on the book will also be on that page of where and when you can get the book and how it's available and whatever they're doing. I just like to write. I'm not being paid for the book. I just like to write. 
So I mean, I, I write a book, I give it to somebody. If they want to do something with it, great. If they don't, he did this project with me. Um, get occupied with my time. I don't do idle very well. I'm either going to write something or I'm going to do some, some, some artwork or, or something. I stay busy. I read constantly. A lot of my friends will come back around and mail me in books uh, through Amazon, although they won't give me Amazon reviews anymore. It's a little a bit of a shame. Uh, but I get a lot of books mailed in to me. I read them, and then I pass them around the door. And I stay busy. You know? But, yes, he's doing a very fine job with the, uh, the TKSK. And, like I said, it's just uh, uh, people asking a lot of questions. There's a lot, a lot of answers. And they're not being derogatory towards the families. So uh, giving them no reason to complain. Before we conclude this interview, is there anything that you'd like to talk about that we haven't covered yet? Things are not what they all seem. The, the, media, the media went down a path. They wanted they they, they found a, an easy an easy topic to get a lot of attention, and then they went somewhere else. Kayla's not who she says she is, and Dustin got a sweetheart deal with only getting it for uh, eighty four months. It still surprises me that the state didn't want to even look at him, wouldn't even talk to him. When they, I mean, he openly admitted that he bought me the guns. I mean, he knew about the murders before and after the fact, and was Kayla's ex boyfriend. But, I'm not the monster you think I am. Have I done wrong? Yes. Have I killed people? Yes. Are there more that you don't know about? Yes. But what's the point of giving them up? I'm doing right forever anyhow. I don't want anything for it. I'm not going to get anything for it. I'm not trying to get off death row. Being left alone. So, I'm just, I'm really not trying to provoke or cause any issues over it. I'm just letting it go where it goes. I admit to what I did, I accept responsibility, and I move on with my day. If I never kill again, I'm entirely okay with it. So, each time I kill, I never had a goal to kill another. But the more money you make, the more people who want to try playing games. <laughs> I know this was really long. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for listening. I'm a